Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're good. Today, we're going to be talking about the popular books that I hated. <laughs> I lasted this video like a year ago, so I think that's a decent amount of time to like do it again because I just feel like I feel like I'm good to talk about negative stuff right now. <laughs> So this isn't just all the books I've hated in the past year. This is books I would class as popular in some way, having some hype around them. Okay, the first book I want to talk about is The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides. This book is... Oh my god, it makes me... This book makes me angry. This book actually makes me feel like I've got steam coming out of my ears. I am fucking raging. Raging. So basically this one the Goodreads Thriller of the Year Awards, I think a couple years ago, and I just can't, I just, I, I cannot fathom why. Like, I actually can't, I can't understand why. Like, it was so bad. Basically, this is about a woman who killed her husband and has refused to speak since, and so she's being held, like, in this, like, psychiatric hospital, and a new psychiatrist has taken over her case. Now, you may think, Megan, that sounds really interesting. And it does sound really interesting. However, it's not even about her. It's like not even about her. It's about the psychiatrist. And this man is as boring as like white bread. He is the human personification of white bread. This man is boring. I do not care about your life. I do not care about your struggles with your girlfriend. I don't give a shit. I do not give a shit. I don't care. And I was just so angry when I was like, when are we going to get into this woman who's actually interesting? And instead we're focusing on this man and him being pathetic and annoying. And I they put me through purgatory. Yeah. Mm. They put me through hell on this earth. I was very angry. <laughs> I was very angry. I don't understand why this is so highly rated. It read is very misogynistic to me as well in the way that it viewed women. You know when books kind of view women as like archetypes or like you can just tell when someone can't write women and they're just like stereotypes or embodiments of like one female trait. You know what I mean? Um, oh my God. I just want justice for this plot because it could have been so interesting, but it was just very boring. What was my other- Oh, this fucking ending. Oh my god. I was angry. I was angry. Oh my god. Never in my life have I been more infuriated by an ending. It was bad. Like, it was really bad. Like, I read it and I was like- I, I remember- <laughs> I remember I thought about that being the plot twist before it was revealed. And I was like, no, they wouldn't do that. Like, that's shit. Like, they wouldn't- they would not do that. And then it happened. It just felt such a cheap ending, like such a, a easy end. Oh, I didn't even feel like it was set up well, this whole twist. Obviously I can't really say anything about it, but it angered me so much. So this book, I just, I've never felt so much anger and annoyance reading a book. And the thing is it had potential because some of it wasn't badly written. That's why I ended up giving it a two stars because it was like okay in terms of like the author's skill. There was just so many elements that angered me. <laughs> the next popular book that I hated was Supernova by Marissa Mayer. So this is the third book in like the Renegades superhero series that Marissa Mayer written. And I think my journey with this series was like a three star, a four star, and then a two star. Should I even give this like a 1.5? It may have been like a 1.5. We're following like Nova, who is this, she's with the villains, she's been raised with them, and she kind of masquerades as a hero, uh, one of the renegades, to gain information from them. Um, but obviously she starts like having feelings for her team and for one boy in particular, and uh, you know, whatever. It's a very easy read. Like these books do read super fast because they're like some of the, Marissa May has some of the best like pacing and like just, okay, I can just carry on reading this and not think too much about it. How, okay, this is my problem here. So many people who had average feelings about the first two said that this one was the best. Like it really pulled it out of the bag. It was like so much better on so many levels. I saw so many people talking about how good it was and then I read it and the ending, again, it was the ending that really broke the camel's back for me. Like I wasn't enjoying it throughout, but the ending was some of the most ridiculous shit I have ever read. I just, I'm just sick of everybody. I just want to be happy and by my damn self. 
the way that some characters acted, like the decisions, because there was a lot in the ending, right, without spoiling anything, there was a lot of things happening that were big reveals, right? Just big events happening, lots of big events happening. And the way that they would just like brush over it and like, it just felt so rushed and so unrealistic. These characters would never act in that way. It was, too, it, it was, I was reading it and I was like, are they fucking okay? Like, has something happened? Like, are they un under some sort of like spell or I don't know, you know, like, uh, 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 <laughs> are they not fully like in their own heads? Because you would never act like that. You would never have that reaction to what is happening. Never, never. It was absolutely infuriating. It had been about a year since I'd read the second one and I think my taste had just changed a bit and like leveled up a bit <laughs> um, because yeah, the other writing of this and just everything about it just wasn't fully there for me. But it was particularly my, my anger at the ending because it was absolutely outrageous. It was just bullshit. It was just, no. The next one I hated was A Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by, is it Mackenzie Lee? I, listen. <laughs> so we all know last year this author, well, some of you may not know, but this author was in a lot of drama for like writing in other authors' books. Like, don't buy this book, read mine or some shit at this bookstore um, and other stuff as well. And like, I'm never obviously interested in reading from this author again, but I, <laughs> I finished this book like a day before that drama happened. So my timing was impeccable because this book was awful. It was bad. Now, this was a long time ago. I read this about a year ago. I cannot remember a lot of it. Because it's shit! But basically the main guy is to go on this like tour of Europe like a lot of rich men would like young men would do at this time that this is set but he's going with his sister and his best friend it was just terrible it was just terribly written I hate when I can't this is a, one of my biggest problems often with YA that I don't like is I can't envisage it like stuff is just not described well enough and I'm just like what is actually happening here what is actually happening here I thought the main character was incredibly annoying like he was like he was not likable in any way I thought the representation of bisexuality was like questionable at best and it was just boring like I've never read a like it was one of the most lackluster nothing books I have ever read it was bad and I don't understand because this before Mackenzie Lee's reputation went down the drain this was like a popular book like I'd heard so many people speak about this I think I only read it for a readathon like I had never had any interest in it beforehand good lord <laughs> it was so boring where's the flavor Where's the flavor in this? Okay, the next book I am very sorry for. I am still upset about this. I still kind of don't want to talk about it, but An Ember in the Ashes. <laughs> I recently read this. I read it in a wrapped up video and I gave it like two stars. It was bad. Miss Jackson. So in this we're following uh, Leia, Le Leia and Elias. Leia's brother has just been like captured for treason and she's trying to save him. And Elias is a soldier who is questioning whether he should desert. The characters in this was, was so one dimensional to me. And one of my biggest problems was how easy it was, like how convenient everything was. I really struggle with remembering my critiques for this book. I actually, when I was getting ready today, I went back and watched my vlog to like, you know, reacquaint myself with my critiques because I really have blurred it out of my memory. And already now I'm sitting here and I'm like, what were my, like I, this book, my brain is like, we're just gonna pretend it didn't happen. Like I was so excited for this. This is probably on this list, the book I was most excited for. It was on like my list of books I have to read this year. And my brain is just refusing to hold any critiques of it in because it's so upset that I didn't like it. Hang on, I've actually got to think about, I literally just watched myself speak about why I didn't like this book. Oh yeah, okay, thank you Megan. That was another point. It has the, the dual perspective between Leia and Elias. A book having a dual perspective, dual timeline doesn't, isn't 
isn't a death sentence for me because some of my favorite books have that in. However, if I haven't liked a book, the frequency of books I don't like that have dual perspectives is high. I've connected the two dots. You didn't connect shit, but I've connected them. It's definitely a common theme that has to be done really well, otherwise it makes me dislike the book. Either I feel like I don't get attached to either storyline enough because we're just flitting back and forth between them and I don't feel like either one is convincing enough, or it becomes too formulaic. Like you know where the story is gonna keep going, you know you're gonna go to this storyline, then go to this storyline. Whereas I like the storylines that I read to be a lot more unpredictable and fluid and like you constantly don't know where it's gonna go. Whereas I feel like it becomes way too predictable if you're just going back and forth between these two perspectives. Sometimes I think it works better if you don't know like the order that you're gonna go go in or whatever but like when you're literally just going back and forth between these two it just becomes way too repetitive for me. This is like such a loved book and I don't understand. Like I want to understand but I don't. And the last book on this list is questionable because it did have a lot of critiques about it but it was one of the biggest releases ever. So this is Midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer. Holy shit was this bad. I kind of wish I had never read it especially the more I think about like Stephanie Meyer's track record and everything but I read it because Twilight was like my obsession when I was a kid, you know, it's like that nostalgic factor. I was never really into any other fandom or books or anything other than Twilight. But this like, I just wish this was, uh, this should never have existed. <laughs> so this is Twilight from Edward's perspective. And like, this man is the most Oh, this man will go on like 20 page monologues about how sad he is and about how shit his life is. And I'm like, can we keep it moving? Can we like, can we do something? I was like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Should we speed it up a little bit? Yeah. Here's the thing. Stephanie Meyer had the, had the opportunity here to make the whole stalking thing with Bella, like how he sneaks into her room at night. Like she had the opportunity to maybe make that less creepy. It somehow, it became more creepy. It was... Edward was like, I was like, I actually don't like him. Like I actually find him scary and I actually am not vibing. When you read from his perspective, I think Stephanie Meyer has the, the unique ability to make whatever character she's writing from the perspective of very boring because Bella was way more interesting in this book. So she just has this ability to like, whoever's perspective you're reading from that character is boring as hell and annoying as hell but yeah I kind of just wish I hadn't read this it was a two star it doesn't it shouldn't have happened and it was shite so that is all of the popular books that I have hated in the past year I would say obviously I've hated other books but um I wouldn't deem any of them as like popular popular books these are the only ones that I would deem as that let me know what popular books you have hated I would love to hear your opinion. Um, I'll link below the vlogs that I read these books in. I'll also link the last time I did this about a year ago. If you got into the end of this video, comment the angry face emoji. Cause I actually really like that emoji. I feel like it's kind of cute. Like, anyway, <laughs> yeah, comment that emoji if you got into the end and I will see you very soon in another video. Bye.